Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we look at the third aspect of electrochemical cells. And we are looking particular, particularly at electrolysis. We discussed uh, the basics of uh, um, electrolytic cell. We spoke about copper refinement and we spoke about electroplating where all, always the substance that wants to be coated must be placed at a cathode. Today we will look at um, the extraction of zinc. Uh, sorry, not zinc, there's a mistake here. It's supposed to be the extraction of aluminium. Let me just fix that for you. Okay, I've just fixed up that error. Sorry about that. The extraction of aluminium. And we see that aluminium is greatly greatly found, greatly found in, in high quantities in Australia. And it is shipped to South Africa because South Africa has uh, a cheaper and maybe... Uh, it's a cheaper form in which they can extract uh, aluminium. So we see that uh, the ore, aluminium ore, which is called bauxite, is transported to South Africa. And, and we see that uh, what happens here is that we use our electricity in very high quantities to take this bauxite and then break it up by electrolysis to form pure aluminium. Bauxite, as we know it, is mainly aluminium oxide, Al2O3, but there are other variations of uh, oxides of aluminium uh, and other uh, salts present in the ore of bauxite, but this is the primary ingredient of bauxite. Now, the melting point of bauxite is very high, over 2,000 degrees Celsius. So, in order for it to be um, broken down, by electrolysis, what what do what the companies do? They change it to alumina or creolite. And if you look at creolite, it's basically they mix the alumina, which is the molten molten aluminium oxide bauxite, with creolite, which is aluminium, I'd, sodium aluminium. It's Na two Na three Al. F6. Sodium aluminium fluoride, so to say. So the molten, um, the aluminium oxide is separated from the bauxite using sodium hydroxide. The aluminium oxide is then dissolved into molten cryolite, which is sodium aluminium fluoride. And this brings down the temperature to around 900 degrees Celsius, the melting point of this particular solution. So from 2000, more than 2000 degrees Celsius, by you treating it with sodium hydroxide and uh, um, cryolite, we see that the melting point now drops to 900 degrees Celsius. And then we see here in this particular case here, the aluminium cryolite that's here is in this particular area and the electricity, we see we have carbon rods <coughs> that up immersed into the molten aluminium oxide and cryolite solution and we see that a particular reaction takes place here so at the one at the one at the anode at the anode what happens is we get oxygen that is going to be formed and this oxygen joins with the carbon rods that's there actually I should put the arrow there we should rather just make it positive. What happens is the oxygen that's formed reacts with the carbon rods to form carbon dioxide. So this is actually what happens at, um, if you put this here, just put this here like that. So this is what actually happens at these rods. That's why we see that the rods are being decomposed. They are getting smaller and the bubbles that are formed is carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide gas that is formed is released via this channel as we see in this particular case. On the other hand, how does the aluminium form? We see that the aluminium, which is part of the alumina, is Al3 plus and it reacts by receiving three electrons to become aluminium solid metal and that goes down to the bottom and this aluminium 
is given off and this takes place at the cathode so this is a reduction and this takes place at the cathode the cathode and as we've seen in the previous examples the cathode will be the the cathode is the negative terminal so at the negative terminal in this case the whole pot the pot which is coated with metal this whole particular pot is actually the negative terminal i'll just put it in red for us here so this is the this becomes the negative terminal in this case the whole pot itself is a negative terminal and the carbon rods here are your positive terminals so at the negative terminal we see that the aluminium ions from the alumina and cryolite solution receive electrons to form aluminium and at the carbon rod we see that actually what happens at the carbon rod the oxygen uh, that's uh, there well the oxygen ions that are there become oxygen by giving off two electrons not two electrons if you have to balance it uh, it becomes four electrons just to balance it out so this is what happens at the anode and then as we have mentioned the oxygen reacts with the carbon from of the of the electrodes and it forms carbon dioxide that is given out there but basically these are the two uh, uh, half reactions that take place in the solution the aluminium ions receive two electrons undergo reduction to become aluminium and the oxygen ions lose electrons to uh, by oxidation at the cathode leo and this takes place at the anode sorry at the anode and our net reaction will be that we have aluminium ions from the molten alumina and we have oxygen ions that are from the bauxite al2o3 from here and we see that under electrolysis under the process of electrical energy it forms aluminium which we tap out as molten aluminium and it forms oxygen gas and this oxygen gas reacts with the carbon electrodes that we have here at the anode to form carbon dioxide and in so doing we have the molten aluminium that is tapped and then they basically put in ingots they call them ingots they put in it's like when you're baking you put your your, your dough into the cupcake holders and into into molds basically and they are made into ingots where we see that the aluminium is uh, cooled down into ingots and we get aluminium metal solid which is then given back to australia or wherever else they want to sell it just a one or two more important points we see that in order for this process to be cost effective uh, it needs large amounts of electrical energy and unfortunately we see what south africa today in our energy crisis we, much of our electrical energy is used in processes like these industrial processes where our electrical energy is used in the manufacture of aluminium another point we see that carbon dioxide is released and carbon dioxide if it's let out into the atmosphere has implications for global warming those are the negative uh, factors relating to the extraction of aluminium and um, the positive factor that we do have is that aluminium is a, a recyclable material so it is easy to recycle aluminium and in so doing we don't have to keep on making new aluminium as much as possibly we have to make other metals okay that will just be some of the points related to the extraction of aluminium thank you very much